Hi players, bonjour from Paris, my name is Asaf Hirsch and welcome to my channel Easy Board Games. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that usually I don't talk about in this channel and maybe that's a little bit too bad. But since yesterday, uh, from the launching of Galactic Cruise, uh, launched on Kickstarter, and seeing all the hype that is going on around this game, I thought I want to give you my two cents about it. So Galactic Cruise is a, a new game that already for so many months, I've seen it in all over my social media, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. And I've seen it already with a lot of uh, content creators that received their copy, of course, to create more hype. And I thought to myself, wow, well, like, I'm super excited to see this game and to back it. Yesterday when it launched, I was like already with my finger about uh, uh, backing this game. And then, and then I stopped. And I thought to myself, hold on, for two reasons. First of all, because I was in the middle of playing Voidful and it was my turn. So I thought it would not be so fair for the other players if I'm going to uh, be occupied with that. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to reach it a little bit later. After uh, um, 30 hours of putting back Voidful in the box, I was like, okay, now it's time to uh, back this game. <clears throat> when I went back to the Kickstarter page and I wanted to back it, I thought to myself, hold on for a second, do you really want to back this game. Is it a game that I really want now in my collection? Now, I haven't played Galactic Cruise, and to be honest, I just saw a few videos. This game, it looks cool, okay? To me, the first time that I saw it, before I, I saw who are the designers or from which company it is, I thought to myself, oh, Vitala Serda probably has a new game. And it took me only a few more days or a few more times when I researched this game to understand that this is not a game by Vitala Serda but it does resemble it a lot. Now, in their description, they're saying this is a mid to heavy Euro game. Again, this is something that is talking to me uh, very much because I enjoy heavy Euro games. And I'm not so sure that I want or need this game. More, more likely, it's like need this game in my collection. This is without saying that this game is good or not good. I'm sure that you can have a good experience with it, but the hype that was around this game is something that made me think two times. Now, I appreciate companies that are pushing their games uh, in, in order to uh, create more hype and actually create more uh, the fuss around it, the buzz, and at the day of the launching of the Kickstarter, they can fund their game in four minutes. And I'm not talking about all these uh, uh, crazy 1,000 euros um, pledges, you know, that were reserved a little bit maybe for the closer people or something like that. I'm talking about just the, 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 the basic game that people are really in a rush to back. Now, the timeline of this game looks really legit. They're saying that they're going to deliver to all the backers around February of 2025. And I think that uh, to have a Kickstarter in one year that is totally legit, that of course, without the fast for the Chinese New Year or whatever, we're going to uh, see during the campaign a little bit of delays, but that is something that is totally acceptable, I think, in Kickstarter, as long as there is good communication. Now, the thing is that after I thought, do I really want this game or do I really need this game in my collection? And I've answered to myself, no, I felt kind of a relief. I'm not a fan of Vitala Serda's games, and I'm saying that with a really a little bit of cautious because I think that Vitala Serda is an amazing designer. Personally, and again, I know that, uh, that this Galactic Cruise is not one of his games, but it does resemble it. I just think that when I looked on a few more videos and especially the Kickstarter page, I thought to myself, this game is a lot of bling, okay? There is a lot of, in my opinion, something that I call, and of course, you know, this term, overproduction of a game. I don't know if I need each tile to be super thick just for saying that there are thick cardboards in this game. And I don't know if I need a million of custom meeples in different shapes or whatever in order for me to back this game. Because at the end of the day, the question is, is this game good or not? Now, again, I haven't played this game. I have no idea. I can assume that I am going to enjoy this game. But at the same time, looking at my shelf of shame, okay, of all the games that I haven't played, I'm not sure that I need another game that is going to be pretty much maybe the same, maybe with a different theme, but it's going to be pretty much the same as other games that I haven't touched. 
Now, this whole sensation of uh, fear of missing out, this FOMO that we're talking about it a lot in the Kickstarter or in the uh, crowdfunding community, let's say it like that, of course, board gamers. When you're seeing the number of backers that, uh, that pledged for this game, I'm thinking to myself, I think that I will be able to get a secondhand copy of this game when this game will already arrive to the backers. Do I already need to know that I'm going to be one of the first people to receive it? Probably not. Because in any case, the moment that the, uh, the project, the moment that this game is going to hit the different backers, already the next day you can see uh, the page of BGG is just like filled with people trying to sell this game. Some of them are trying to make profit, so to sell it to the higher price. Some of them are just like open this game they're like, oh, this is nice material. I don't really need this game. And when I have something like 30 games on my shelf of shame, I don't think that I need another game in my collection, especially, and that is with no offense to the designers because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that this is a game that I can enjoy, especially because I don't think they're going to bring something new to the table. Now, again, talking about overproduced uh, games, we have a lot of them, you know, uh, games that are with a uh, sun drop and extraordinary uh, uh, figurines or something like that. that. That exists, that happens there. But today, the more games I have or the more games that I play, I kind of enjoy only deluxifying the games that I already have and I enjoy. I'll give you an example for Tricarian. I recently uh, bought the Playmat. Is it something that is going to enhance the experience from Tricarian? Nope. I'm going to enjoy Tricarian as much as I enjoy it today, but this is something that allows me to, I don't know, deluxify a game that I already know and like. And as you know, Tricarian is my number one game, at least for now. And of course, for other games, there are different things that you can that you can add a little bit later. Either it's a fan-made a, a 3D print of something or just another official truck that the company is uh, taking out, like a, a metal coins or a, something from resin that is a little bit more beautiful and something like that. But today, when I'm backing a game, I really prefer, first of all, to just back the game as is to see like in its basic uh, uh, pledge and see if I like this game because if I don't like this game and I already invested a lot of money, I'm it's kind of a bummer. Now, when I'm looking at Galactic Cruise, I'm seeing that the, the pledge that most likely, if I would have backed this game, I would have taken, that is uh, the pledge that cost, if I'm not mistaken, 119 euros. So let's say 120 just for the calculation. Here in France, we need to pay 20%, so that is 24 euros more. So already we're looking at the game, 120 plus 24 at 144 euros. Add to that around 20 euros of delivery and we're looking at a game that cost 164 euros. Now, this is quite a lot of money to ask for another Euro game. And again, I'm saying this is without disrespecting the designers or whatever amazing job that they create. But again, I'm having the same feeling with Vitalis Serda's games, and I don't know if it's uh, his decision or the, the, the publishers of just like overproducing the game, having extra big meeples or just like thicker cardboards or something like that. And I don't know if this kind of game is something that is worth 164 euros. I think that for this price, if you're looking at a secondhand market or even just like other games that are not overproduced like that, you can you can have at least one amazing game or you can just find like a few games in secondhand market. For example, I saw not a long time ago a, a Edge of Darkness, for example, with all the expansions at the, pretty much the same price at 170 euros. Now, it's not to compare between Edge of Darkness and Galactic Cruise, because obviously these are two very different games. But the content that you're receiving in Edge of Darkness is mind-blowing, especially with all the expansions. For another example, I just bought Hallertau and a Nusfjord, both of them for, I think, 90 or 90-something 90 euros new in shrink, which, of course, again, maybe the, the production level is not the same as in Galactic Cruise, but you're still getting here to heavy Euro games, okay, from a very well-known designer. And whether you like Uwe Rosenberg or not, he does create 
I think good games, okay, challenging games, and I think that that you can at least appreciate him as a designer. So for for almost half the price, you're getting two. I think something that will be good games that I will enjoy in the price of Galactic Cruise, which again, this is something that I will probably enjoy. If it's going to hit my table time after time after time, probably not. And this is why I have 30 games pretty much in my shelf of shame, which is really a shelf of shame because I'm ashamed saying that I have this amount of games uh, that I haven't touched yet that are in my collection. And still I continue uh, trying to find new deals about games that I want to have in my collection. So this sensation of relief that I've had when I decided not to back a Galactic Cruise is something that I thought to myself, am I cured from FOMO? Is it something that like, I can actually let it go now? Probably not, okay? Because I think that with other projects that are going to come that might be a little bit more interesting for me, I think that still I would back it, I don't know. But this is something that I really felt good with it. Again, it's not to persuade you not to back for this game, but more like saying before you're clicking this button, before you're seeing that this game has been launched and you're like, okay, let me be one of the first backers or let me just have my place over there. Take your time, okay? In any case, most of these campaigns are at least going to last for 20 days. Take a few more days to think about it. If there is an early bird or something that is going to uh, give you uh, an advantage in the first 48 or 72 hours, and this is something that you're really like, yeah, of course, I, I totally get it, all right? I mean, even though most likely we'll be able to get this game cheaper a little bit later, unless, of course, it's going to become one of the grail games and it's going to be out of print, etc., then just wait with it a little bit. Let it sink just for a little bit more, a few more days, one week later, to make sure that this is really something that you would like to click, and in my case, pay around 160 euros, maybe in your country, it's going to be a little bit less or a little bit more with delivery. But I just think that before clicking on this button, we need to look at our collection and, and think to ourselves, hold on, from this moment until the next year, do I still have what to play in my collection? I think that, especially if you're watching this video, most likely the answer will be yes. I have what to play. I still have a, a games in my collection that are might be new and shrink still, and they're sitting on the shelf. They might be a, a brand new and I haven't even punched the different cardboards that are in there. And in any case, it's not like this game is going to completely disappear. Of course, if I would have been around board games back in uh, 2010 when StarCraft came or something like that, and I would have the possibility to like pledge for it or something like that, then yeah, of course, because this game became a, a, one of the grail games that fortunately I have it on my shelf, but I paid the price for it. And I'm sure that it didn't cost 150 or 200 euros uh, back in the day. But when you are looking at a game today, I think that quite often you can already understand if this game is really going to be out of print, if they're not going to do a reprint or it's going to go to retail later or something like that. And in case of Galactic Cruise, I think that if not for a reprint, because there are already thousands of backers for this game, so if not for a reprint, at least you'll be able to find it at second hand at a normal price, just like all Again, it's not the same designer, but just like all Vitala Sellers games, when they came, you need to uh, uh, back for it and it's going to cost you 140, 160 euros. But today, when you're looking at On Mars second hand, I think you can find it for 90 euros relatively easily, even for less. And this is just an example. Uh, even Weather Machine is uh, being sold uh, cheaper. Of course, also some of the older games like Lisboa and stuff like that. So I think that Galactic Cruise is going to be pretty much in the same direction something that you will be able to find cheaper at a later uh, period of time. And until then, you still have what to play that is sitting on your shelf. So that is just my two cents about this game. I don't know, let me know if you agree with what I'm saying or not. Uh, um, I would love to open a discussion for it, so hit me up on the comments. And, uh, and if you decided to back Galactic Cruise, then I wish you to enjoy this game as much as possible that this game will come really at the beginning of uh, 2025. Enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.